Welcome to this video. In this video, I would like to show and explain to you how you can use SAP GUI scripting to export SAP data into multiple Excel files. So this can be used to automate repetitive tasks. Enjoy this video and let's get started. So the first th thing you have to check is if SAP GUI scripting is enabled on your SAP server. Here in the bottom right corner in my theme, I can see that scripting is currently disabled on this server. Um, here normally you have some kind of orange icon and you can easily activate SAP GUI scripting if you go into the transaction R set 11 to maintain profile parameters. And here you can simply search for asterisk scripting asterisk using the search help. So with the four key and here we have to check this profile parameter. So sub GUI slash user underscore scripting. And therefore you simply click on display and then here we can see that currently this profile parameter is set to false. So it's currently disabled and to simply activate it you go to change value and here you enter simply true. Go on to save change icon. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. And here you simply have to log off and to log on once again to see see that SAP GUI scripting is activated and that's what I'm gonna do. So here I am logged in once again and here in the system information so in the bottom right corner I can see that SAP GUI scripting is enabled and also under customized local layout and script recording and playback I can see that SAP GUI scripting is enabled. Once you click here, there you have the ability to basically record a script. If for your case, the record script button is grayed out, so is unavailable. Then you have to check once again the RSET 11, search for script, asterisk scripting, asterisk, search help. And here there is one additional profile parameter, the sub GUI user scripting disable recording. And here you have to make sure that this parameter is set to false because if it would be set to true then it would disable the record button so then you can also change within here the value to false that the record button is available for you as well and in some cases under the sap gui option sap scripting sap gui scripting is also disabled so you can check this and under customized local layout and then options and here under accessibility and scripting and scripting you have also to make sure that you have checked the setting enable scripting if not then just uh, check it uh, or click it and select apply and then uh, once again after logging into your sap system sap GUI scripting should be enabled for you also as well Okay, and now I would like to record the script to export the SAP data into the Excel file and afterwards we are gonna adjust the coding so that you will export your SAP data into multiple Excel files. And to do this, first of all, we're going into the start menu. You don't need this, but I'm also doing this. And then I'm going to customize local layout and then here I go to script recording and playback. And here basically you have to specify your script name. In my case, I would like to name it to script5.vbs and within here you can enter your directory where your uh, SAP GUI script will be saved. With the browse button, you can also specify within the Windows Explorer your directory, your file name and so on. But here it's perfectly fine. And then we go to the record script button and now every action will be recorded. So keep really in mind that you don't click too much, that you don't hit any keys you don't want to 
please stay focused and just do whatever you want to have recorded. And here in the system information, we can now see also that the script is running. And I simply would like to export the um, uh, demo data of, of flights in the data browser. And therefore I go with uh, slash N into the transaction SE16. Please make sure that you're using the prefix slash n upfront because maybe you are executing your SAP GUI script uh, when you have opened another SAP transaction and without the prefix slash n then you won't reach your preferred transaction so slash n is needed then hitting the enter key to reach the data browser and then within the data browser i would like to enter this table name so containing just some flight data and then hitting the enter key once again then here it's important to set the focus to um, this field carrier ID because that's what we're going to need because within here I would like to enter LH so for Lufthansa to extract the Lufthansa data and later on we will see that you have also the ability to um, change this select uh, selection criteria to also AA so American Airline or whatever you want to. Um, for this demo table, um, the other parameters are perfectly fine, so also the maximum number of hits. Maybe in your case, if you have more data, then you can erase it or change this um, value to what you need. Um, and that's also, I think, crystal clear, but you have to enter the, your selection criteria that you need to. So, but it's important to set the focus into this field. Then what we're gonna need, I hit the F8 key to execute the selection. Then we have our data. Now I would like to export the data. So I go to spreadsheet. That's perfectly fine, I confirm. Then within here, you enter your directory and your file name. In uh, my case, I just would like to save it to uh, ctemp, that's perfectly fine. And I just name it to LH as the selection criteria I have entered in the selection criteria. And then it's perfectly fine. Then I click on the generate button to generate the um, Excel file. And then I am here, that's perfectly fine. I uh, want once again to go into the data browser. Um, after the export, I go one step back with the F3 key and I'd like to set the focus into this carrier ID field once again. And then that's basically all. So now I would like to end the recording. I open up this pop-up and then I click on the stop recording button. So, and then as you can also see in the system information that currently the script is not running. So let's check the directory. So here we can check, for example, our data, our Excel file, and we can also see our script five. And if we, for example, have a closer look into the editor, we can also see what happens within here. So as mentioned, we have executed the data browser, entered the table name, entered the selection criteria, the directory, the file name, and so on. And yeah, that is perfectly fine. So this works. You can also test this. For example, if you delete this table, okay, first of all, you have to close the Excel file, of course. So let's try this once again. I double click on the script on the VBS file. So here you can directly see that the Excel file has been created and you can also see that the data has been exported successfully. So, and now we would like to insert our SAP GUI scripting coding into Excel. And therefore you have, first of all, to make sure that the developer ribbon is activated because that is needed. You can simply activate it under file and then options and then customize ribbon. And within here, you can simply select developer and click on okay. And then you have also the developer ribbon. So then uh, once you are in developer, 
then you can go to macros and within here you can enter your macro name in that you would like to insert your coding so for example sap to excel export whatever you like to then you click on uh, create and then you have created your macro successfully. So, and then, so because I would like to also show you a little framework, I recommend that you include the SAP Quick Scripting API. And to do this, you go to Tools and then References. And within here, you have to make sure that you add your SAP Quick Scripting API. And to do this, you go to Browse. And then within here, you have to make sure that you are in in the directory of your SAP GUI. So depending if you have the 32-bit or the 64-bit, um, the directory is a different one, of course. And then you go to SAP Frontend, SAP GUI, and within here, you're searching for active X controls. Then you're scrolling down a little bit, and then you're using SAP FEWSE OCX click on open and then down here you can see that SAP GUI scripting API has been selected and you click on OK. Then here I have a little framework for you. Um, I'm always uh, using um, at first because within here I'm basically yeah, declaring four variables. So one for the SAP GUI, one for the application, one for the connection and one for the session. Then I'm checking if um, yeah, basically those um, objects are available if the application won't crash and then basically yeah i'm setting the session to work with and now next what you have to do i would like to save this so i using control s then within here you have to make sure to save your excel with the type excel macro enabled workbook that is important so that your macro um, are executable and then i just simply save it as book um, six that's perfectly fine for demo purposes um, and then I click on save. Then what we're gonna do is we include our coding or SAP GUI scripting that we have created. So therefore we're going into our directory, going into script five, going to edit. And here it's important that you just need the coding below the last end if. So you're using control C, minimize this, this as well. And then I'm pasting it and here under the set session formatting a little bit. So this is the code I have copied. And then I'm simply uh, using control S once again, and then you are ready to go. So that's perfectly fine. So then I would like to delete this Excel file that it will be executable. And then what you can do, going once again back into our Excel file, you can include this in a button. So therefore going into the developer ribbon, going to insert form control button, and then with drag and drop, you can simply yeah, uh, insert a button and therefore you specify the macro. So it's up to Excel export, I click on OK. Here you can simply uh, change the text to whatever you like to. So for example, SAP export. And then basically, once again, Control S, you can with click test your application. So I click there in the background, you can see that the cursor changes. And here we have once again, our Lufthansa flight data. Once again, in the directory, we can also see that here the Excel file is there. And now what we gonna do going once again into our coding. So here we can see that basically we are always extracting the Lufthansa data. So it's kind of like a little bit static and we would like to have it more dynamic. And to do this, we're going into our uh, Excel file and therefore we just simply would like to take values entered into Excel. And therefore, for example, here you have a column A with the K 
carrier IDs, so for example, Lufthansa, American Airlines, and maybe whatever you want to. And therefore, I would like to loop over those values and extracting all the data and um, using um, this selection criteria in the data browser of our table. So therefore, um, yeah, you have to change a little bit your coding, but it's not that hard. So therefore, going once again into our coding, we need definitely two variables. So one is the carried ID as a string, of course, and we need, for example, I max as integer. So this is the maximum number of the row that contains a value. So going once again into our workbook, in this case, it's three. So American airline. So we need those two variables. Then what we need is we would like to um, have our coding um, down here. So we would like to loop over this because we don't want to loop over entering the transaction code, entering the table um, again and again. I think this is not needed. And I would like to get first of all the maximum number of the row. And therefore I'm going to use imax is the active workbook dot active sheet and then dot cells and then I'm using rows dot count of one and then I would like to get the last row so using this so this seems to be perfectly fine and then as mentioned I would like to use a loop so for i equals to 2 why am I starting with 2 going once again into our excel file because the first row is reserved for our title carried id of course that is not mandatory I could also have started with directly the value um, yeah, that's perfectly fine. So I'm starting with two. And then I'm going to, as mentioned, to the uh, IMAX, so to the maximum number of the row to IMAX. And then down here, I would like to yeah, increase the index. I'm formatting this a little bit. So, and that seems to be perfectly fine. So within the loop, I would like to get the carried ID and therefore I'm going to my active work book dot active sheet dot range. And here I am using string concatenation and this can be done with the and sign with my index i dot value to get the value. And then I would like to replace uh, the static value with the value within the Excel file. And within here, I also would like to have string concatenation within your file name. So this seems to be perfectly fine using Control S to save it. Okay, then go to the directory, delete the Lufthansa. Of course, first of all, you have to close this. So I'm closing it. And now I would like to, to delete this. So that's perfectly fine. Okay, so let's test this if I click on SAP export. Okay, here this has worked successfully. So we can see first of all our American airline data, our Lufthansa data and when we check this also in the directory we can see those two files. So this has worked successfully. You can of course as mentioned uh, improve the coding. You can also um, yeah, have multiple values um, as you want to but that's uh, an easy use case.